We all live in a real world, but surrounded by our manufactured images of it. By that I mean that each of our minds manufactures its version of reality. It automatically analyzes the incoming sense data, and from that makes its best guess as to what is out there. And it is almost always right, but sometimes those manufactured images do not fit reality. I would like to show you some. the castle of chaos, home of Jerry Andrus, where sometimes realities are bent almost beyond belief. Almost. Here's a sort of a crude model of a city block uh, sort of skyscrapers just made out of a wooden block. Now here's a curious thing. If I put this steel ball bearing at the base of that skyscraper, no magnets or threads or anything, it will roll right up to the top. Very curious. Look, if I put this ball bearing down at the base of the skyscraper, it will roll right up to the top. Now another interesting thing is if you had an earthquake, that one skyscraper wouldn't fall over because it is very flexible. In fact, it isn't a skyscraper at all. It's lying down. It's made out of tin, and I've drawn on the inside so it looks like the outside. And put down properly at the right angle, it looks like it's standing up. Actually, the top is lower than the bottom, and the ball bearing is actually rolling downhill, not up. Manufactured realities. I made this uh, paradox box out of an old cardboard box, and what I did is I drew on the inside so that it would look like the outside of a box. If I put it on the stand at the right angle, it looks like the outside of a box. Now there's a triangular flap on the end. If I pivot that around, a very strange thing happens. You see, it looks like now the corner of the box has been cut off and built in. But if I move it back, there's the corner right out there where it belongs. Very curious. Now the corner again is gone. Now if I punch a hole in the box, then you can see into the box. I'm going to hang, put a tube in the hole. And I have a thread and a hook on the other end and then hook it up. Now, when I move the box, it will look like that tube is turning in there, sort of like a gun sticking out of a gun turret. It actually isn't moving at all in relation to the box. It's all one unit now. But uh, your mind will tell you that it's pivoting like a gun sticking out of a gun turret. Now, if I move it far enough, again, you can see that it's actually the inside. But as soon as it gets around here again, now it again will look like the outside of a box with a tube moving in the hole. Manufactured reality. Here's a sort of a modernistic sculpture of two large brass nuts. If I move them, they look like they're moving independently. Actually, they aren't. They're fastened rigidly together. I'll explain that later. I'm going to take a straight tube and push it through this nut. And it will look like it goes around a corner and through the other one obviously in violation of the way we know the world works. Now, actually, your mind again has manufactured something and is not real. You see, these are inside out. You're looking at the inside of the nut sculptures, and your mind, since it knows how the world works, automatically reverses them, says they're moving independently when they're not. You've heard of acupuncture where they push needles in you. Some people believe in acupressure, pressure point must treat for disease. I don't believe in any of that, but let me show you what I've discovered. If I press right here for three seconds, that's the perfect treatment for anemia. Now, in anemia, you lack iron. This is far, far better 
because you get solid steel, solid steel. Here's what I call the perfect illusion. It's this yellow spot on this sheet of plastic. It isn't literally perfect, but I call it the illusion of the yellow ball. And doesn't that just look solid? Drop the ball in the cone. You will all recall that first it was flat like that, and then it was the illusion. There it is of the yellow ball. Watch the illusion of the yellow ball. Now let me explain what happens. I form this into a tube around my left index finger. Now the only thing I have to be careful about, and of course it is empty, I have to be careful. If the hole gets too large, the ball can get out. I'm going to roll this into a tube instead of a cone. Now you can see that the ball is still in there. Now, if I put one hand over each end of the tube, we all know it is literally impossible for that ball to get out, and yes, it is indeed flat like that. Let me explain what happens. You see, I form this into a cone like this, and we have the perfect illusion of the yellow ball. You know, when I was trying to figure out some way to vanish a ball, I thought about it going up my sleeve, that isn't practical. I thought of having it hidden under my shirt, that isn't practical either. I discovered a very simple way to vanish a rubber ball. I discovered zone zero. This is zone zero. Whatever goes through that hole into zone zero, it instantly vanishes. Whatever goes through the hole into zone zero, it instantly vanishes. It's sort of like a functional black hole because I can reach right in there and retrieve it. I did research on this, and I discovered the ball doesn't actually vanish when it goes through the hole. It's when I take my hand out that it's gone, totally, completely, absolutely gone, but always instantly retrievable. Zone zero. You know, I'm an Oregonian, and we're supposed to perpetuate the myth that it rains there all the time. In fact, my cards even warp. This is Jerry Andrews. I've just shown you a few of the strange and unusual things here at my home, which I call the Castle of Chaos. I hope you enjoyed them, and I thank you for watching. Here, yes. why don't you show us what this is? Well, uh, I believe they have it on the... Uh, I'll spin this disc, and if they if they will put it on the, on the uh, monitor, they have pre-recorded this. There we go, yeah. Now, I, I want you to stare right at the center of it and keep staring at the center of it on the monitor for 20 seconds, and, and uh, I'll tell you when to look away. You keep staring right at the center. It's called a trizonal space warp. It's a thing I invented. It's an amplification of the normal spiral illusion. It's also a weird thing just to look at. Keep staring right at the center. All right, now if they'll put on the cloud picture, it looks like it moves. <laughs> No. <laughs> now, wait a minute, so that you understand, so that you understand what that was, here is the cloud picture that they put over it. There is absolutely no movement. That is a still photo. Why does that do Ooh. that? The clip just preceding was from the Seattle TV thing and shows audience reaction to the space warper when properly done. This section here is on my impossible box. It's a clip from the That's Incredible show some time back. It gives a very good demonstration of what the crate really looks like. As you see, it is nothing at all like a box. It is so far from being a box, and it's pretty interesting that if the camera angle is right, in fact, if you stood there where the camera was and looked, 
It looks exactly like a crate. This is the end of the material on this tape. I hope you have found it of some interest. This is Jerry Andrus, 1638 East First Avenue, Albany, Oregon. It's June the 8th, 1987. This tape is the property of Jerry Andrus.